around seven years old, my brother and I, we were climbing a tree and the branch that I was on happened to break and I went all the way down and I landed on an uneven part of the sidewalk. I was stunned. I just laid there, laid there and my brother went to get my mom and I laid down on the couch and my mom was on the phone. I was just staring at the ceiling and every few seconds, you know, my body would tense up and shake. Just thinking, I'm like, oh, should I tell my mom? Should I, I'm like, but she's on the phone. I'm like, I'll wait till she, she gets off the phone. Eventually I didn't, I forgot about it. It went away. Uh, there was never any pain until roughly 10 years later, the disc had collapsed, pinched the nerve. And then that's how we ended up at a spine center. And we found out that I had broken my back. Welcome to Bed, Back and Beyond, sharing positive stories of recovery from serious back or neck injury. Your host is CK, a fellow champion who draws on her own experience with herniated disc surgery. Join her as she talks with others who have overcome the physical and emotional trauma of a painful injury and discover for yourself how you can find hope and encouragement in recovery. Today, I am joined by Anthony Lara, who is an online fitness and mindset coach and also a spinal fusion patient. He is gonna talk us through how he moved past the fear of doing anything. Hi, Anthony, thank you so much for joining me on the Bed Back and Beyond podcast. Before we dive into your injury story, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself? My name is Anthony. I'm from Rockford, Illinois, currently living in King City, California. I, not long ago, I began my fitness journey once I eliminated all fears after uh, my spine surgery. That's great. Uh, so what led you to get to need a spine surgery? Uh, around seven years old, my brother and I, we were climbing a tree and the branch that I was on happened to break and I went all the way down and I landed on an uneven part of the sidewalk where the roots of the tree had ruined it. And I hit hard. I was stunned. I just laid there, laid there. And my brother went to get my mom. She came out, picked me up and we walked back into the house and I laid down on the couch and my mom was on the phone. And I was just staring at the ceiling and every few seconds, you know, my body would tense up and shake, tense up and shake. And I was just thinking, I'm like, oh, should I tell my mom? Should I? I'm like, but she's on the phone. I'm like, I'll wait till she, she gets off the phone. Eventually I didn't, I forgot about it. It went away. And then I went, uh, there was never any pain, never any pain until roughly 10 years later, the disc had collapsed, pinched the nerve. And then uh, that's how we ended up at a spine center. And we found out that I had broken my back. You yeah. broke your back at seven years old. Yeah. And but I never, no pain until you were 17. Yeah, no, no pain until the, the disc had collapsed and pinched the nerve. And um, I found out when, cause I, I my room was downstairs in the basement. And when I went to walk up the, the stairs, I had trouble lifting up my right leg. I had a sharp pain shooting up my back and I couldn't lift my leg any higher than like two inches. And I was like, wow, dude, something's wrong here. So that's uh, when I told my, my mom and I'm like, hey mom, there, there's like a big bump like right on my spine would well, turn out to be my the l5 pushing up against yeah the skin oh wow yeah holy cow so you couldn't lift up your leg what other symptoms did you have uh just i mean that was really just about it no pain uh, unless when i just when i moved the leg there was a sharp little pain that mm -hmm. that was it okay so did you go to the emergency room or did you kind of try and uh, see if the pain would go away on its own? No, uh, 
as soon as I felt the pain, I told my mom, and, we're like, and she's like, oh, you know, we'll, we'll make an appointment just to be safe because I don't know what that what that bump is on, on your spine. I'm like, okay, just kept going, kept going. And then the, the doctor's like, I don't see anything wrong here. Like, but I'll send the x-rays out to a specialist and we'll find, and we'll see. And I was in the middle of class when I got called to the principal's office and they're like, hey, your mom's coming to pick you up. And I just sat there, I'm like, I'm like huh. I'm like, my mom would have told me, if, you know, this morning if she was going to pick me up. I don't have an appointment or anything. So she picked me up. We go to the hospital. And then they're like, I'm like, hey, your back's really messed up. We're going to have to send you to the spine center. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's how we <laughs> ended up there. You just get hit with a big surprise. Yeah. In the middle um, of a school day. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, when we arrived to the spine center, the doc his uh the doctor's name was Rowe, Dr. Rowe. And he was looking over the x-rays. Uh we sat down, he's like he's like um your spine is 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 really bad. He's like he's like do you understand how bad it is? I was like I'm like mm, no no, you know. I don't. I'm like, you, you're the spine surgeon. I'm sure you, you know. And he's like, do, uh, do you remember hitting your, your back or anything? And at the time, you know, uh, I didn't think back to that time when I fell off the tree and I told my mom, like, I didn't hit my back last week or anything. And he, he cut me off right there. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, this does not happen in a week. It doesn't happen in a month. It doesn't happen in a year. He's like, like to get to this point where your spine is at, he's like, it takes roughly 10 years. He's like, your disc is like a chewed up piece of gum. That's the only thing holding it together right now. And he's like, he's like, I, he's like, I'm surprised you're even walking into my office. Have you been playing sports and stuff all this time? Yeah, played sports, uh, skateboarding, was running around just normal. Never, oh, ever felt any pain. Wow. So then did he order an MRI or did he stick with the x-ray? Yeah, he did an MRI, uh, did three. And those, those were, they weren't fun uh, because they, they had placed the timer right in front of my eyes. And I'm just <laughs> watching that countdown. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. They're like, oh, you can listen to the radio. I'm like, there's nothing fun on the radio right now <laughs> to get my mind <laughs> off of this. Yeah. Uh, I panicked the the first time I did a, clo a regular MRI. I panicked because you know the MRI is like right here, the machine, and they had to pull me out and then put me back in. Oh, <laughs> I can't man, imagine. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. So sometimes I think back. I'm like, man, how did I ever get through that year long recovery? Like, gone through all that. I'm like, but we're here now. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so the doctor orders an MRI. He tells you, you shouldn't even be walking. <laughs> yeah. And was he like spinal fusion or did he say we need to do some other treatments first? No. Um, so right after he said, um, you know, takes like 10 years. My mom had asked him, um, she's like, uh, why are the, like, do we have any options? Like, what are they? And he had said, like, at this point is, is surgery. He's like, um, he's already having trouble, like, using his right leg. He's like, if, you know, if we wait any, if you choose to not go with surgery, like, he, he's pretty soon he's going to need a brace to help him with his right leg. He's like, so, like, I, I mean, surgery is the only, really the only option at this point. And so surgery it was. <laughs> you go, did you go straight to spinal fusion surgery? No, um, this was at the end of the uh, two months before the school year had ended. So my mom had asked, like, can we wait like until, you know, he finishes school. So the surgery and recovery is like, you know, during the break. So he doesn't have to miss school. The doctor's like, yeah, that, that's fine. But, you know, uh, we're going to have to throw him into some like get, get some cortisone shots like to help him like uh, ease the pain and yeah just finished the last two months 
of school. And within a couple of days, I was getting prepped for surgery. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Was that the end of your 11th grade or 12th grade? 11th. 11th grade. So yeah. 17 years old. Yeah. Just finishing 11th grade. Yeah. And now you need to get back surgery. Yeah. What was going through your mind? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, uh, because the, well, the only thing that was going through my mind, the, doc, the surgeon was like, when you wake up, it's going to, uh, it's going to feel like you were hit by a truck. Like your chest is going to hurt so bad. It's like, it's, it's going to feel like you were hit by a truck. And that's the only thing that was going through. I'm like, damn, when I wake up, I am, I am going to be in a world of pain. I'm like, I'm like, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll get through it. We'll get through it. That, that's really the only thing that was going through my mind. So did they have to go through the front and the back to do your surgery? Uh, through the back. Just yeah. through the back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they had to do through the back spine fusion with a complete disc replacement. So, yep. <laughs> <laughs> How long ago was it? How old are you now? Well, right now I'm 31 years old. So. Oh, are you? Yeah, it's, it's been a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so far so good. It ain't. Yeah. There's no pains. Only in my fitness journey, only when I do anything that that involves more engagement of the lower back mm -hmm. with loaded weight, then I will be feeling it the following day. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can remember, uh, you had the spinal fusion. How long did you have to stay in the hospital once the surgery was done? I was there for, for a few weeks just until uh, I was able to walk again. But a after that, uh, it was all up to me to just keep my back as straight as possible for a year. Yeah. So, yeah, I had a, uh, for a whole year, I was walking like, like a robot and sleeping like Dracula. Did they have you in a brace or anything to help keep you straight? No, but I, um, I did hear that they, they, they gave, you know, usually they give out braces, but they haven't, they, they didn't give me one. So yeah, I was just strict, like following exactly what the doctor has said, because he has said, if it does not fuse correctly, we'll have to break it and do it again. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that doctor, that doctor is all about scaring you. I feel like. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, that helped a lot, you know, cause 17 years old, I'm like, man, I want to run. I want to play sports again. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to run. I'm going to do it. I'm like, no, nah, Anthony, you're, you're, a, you're, a, you're four months in, like you, you're, you're good. Just keep going. If not, they're going to have to do surgery again. You don't want to go through that again. Just stick to what the doctor said. Like you, you, you'll go by quick. So were you living on hospital food for a couple of weeks or was your mom bringing you in dinners? <laughs> No, I was living on hospital food and, you know, like they say, it's not good. It's not fun. And then I was like, man, I am tired of this. And my father, my dad, he, he had shown up, peeks in. He's like, hey, you awake? I'm like, yeah. And then, bam, he brings in some McDonald's. I'm like, oh, finally. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the ultimate yeah. comfort food. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh. I was like, I'm like, thank God, I'm a, I am going to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so um, after you're, you're in the hospital for a couple weeks, did they send you to a physical therapy uh, session? Yeah, they, they did. I did therapy for, for roughly about a few, a uh, couple months. It was a couple months, but you know, they give you homework to do at home, do your stretches, and they want to see you progress every time you go in, like how much you had progressed. Um, and if they see, they're like, hey, are, it, it's looking like you're afraid to move your spine to bend stuff. And then they, they you know, they add some force to it. But yeah, that, that was, I don't know, I, right there is like, um, I'm like, man, like, a parent has to be strong to watch, especially a mother has to be very strong to just watch your son, like, go to the wall. He has to put his, like, do his, like, you, 
and keep a straight face the whole time. Like, I wouldn't be able to do that. Like if I saw my my son like that, I'll be like, oh my god, like you know, it it would be hurting. Yeah, I'm sure it was difficult for her. Yeah, I'm sure, but. <laughs> Yeah. What was the pain level like after, I mean, you, you went into the doctor with only, it sounds like minimal pain, just unable to lift your leg. What was the pain like immediately after surgery? Do you remember? Um, immediately after surgery, there was uh, no pain. I couldn't feel my legs and they had me on medication and I hated the feeling of being under that medication, hated it when they released me from the hospital and they gave me pain medication, threw them away immediately. I told my mom, I'm not taking pain medication. I hate the feeling. I'm like, I'm just going to get through this. I'm like, there's pain, there's pain. Oh, well, I'm like, I do not want to be under that. And, but surprisingly, again, never any pain. (laughs) Wow. So yeah, it was. That's quite the surgery. No pain from. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I guess when it involves my bones, I feel no pain because I had broken my front teeth. I hit the concrete, broken them, no pain. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy but cow. I want to say the most challenging part there was when the nurses had, they had woken me up and they're like, you need to walk. And I was like, so, you know, they stood me up for the first time. They stood me up. And because because of the medication, I felt so nauseous, got so dizzy. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to pass out. Like, I am, like, it, it's, I'm passing out. And I'm going to vomit. And I was like, I had told the nurse, I'm like, I, I need to lay back down. And then she's like, no, no, you, you need to walk. Like, you, you need to start moving your legs. And... Instead of like, you know, arguing, like, hey, I don't feel good. I'm like, okay, like, where do I need to walk? Like, how far? She's like, to the end of the hallway and back. And I remember looking down because I couldn't feel my legs. I was looking, I looked down and I was like, can I, will I be able to move them? And I, and I moved them, but an inch at a time. And I remember I was like, okay, I, I can move them. But the rest of the walk, I was just fighting the urge to vomit or to pass out. I was like, oh, my God, like, I, like this is it. I'm going to pass out. And I was like, no, a- Anthony, you're, you're not going to pass out. You're almost there. You're, you're almost there. All you have to do is get to that wall, get back, and you can lay back down. Do not pass out. And I'm like, you're not passing out. You're not passing out. Like, yeah, that, that one was probably the most challenging part about it. <laughs> So how long did they tell you you could get back to playing sports after the surgery? After surgery, they told me around 10 months, but I had to do therapy and checkups to make sure it was fusing correctly. Everything was still straight. After like the eighth month, like, hey, everything's looking good, Like, but we'll wait a little bit longer and then you can... You know, you can get back to doing whatever it is you want. Run, play, like you can play football, like no problem. You'll be good again. And I'll be, I'm like, oh, man, like, and I remember thinking, I'm like, okay, two months, just two months left. That's it. Like this year is almost over. But yeah, but since I uh, wanted to play sports, I mean, gym class was... It was tough just watching, just watching everyone play these sports. I'm just like, oh my god! But and, and I and I had asked the teacher. I was like, I'm like, hey, can I like just do one sprint? He's like, no, no, because yeah, that I had given him the note as soon as like the year began, and he, you know, he was like reading the note, and he just looks up. He's like, like just looking like what? Like you and looks back down. He's like. He's like, all right, man, just take take laps. I mean, there's really nothing you can do here. I mean, yeah, I was um the doctor had limited me to five pounds max. That's what I could lift up maximum for a year. So a gallon so, of milk. <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right. 
were you able to start school in time in for your 12th year or did you have to delay going back to school? No, I was able to I was able to start on time, but I would leave class earlier to make it on time to my classes because I, you know, I I was still working on my speed, walking, my legs, but and on top of that uh, those big textbooks they give you a backpack full. I couldn't carry it, so someone had to help me out with that. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a lot of volunteers offering to help you uh, leave class early? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Like, hey, are you gonna need help today? I was like, yeah, man, yeah, come help me out. <laughs> I was, how was sitting in a chair for a class? <laughs> that everyone would would ask like, what are you doing? Because I like walk straight stiff and when I turn around I turned around stiff sat down straight grabbed onto the desk then completely turned around they're like what well, why do you do that and you know I would just I would just sit straight as possible on a hard chair and I was like man I broke my spine and these are I have to follow the doctor's uh rules I was like so I mean sitting at those desks like that for a year it was not fun. It was not comfortable at all. But you got through it. Yeah, we got through it. We're here. We're yeah. a lot better. So once you were allowed to start moving normally again, had your back muscles just gotten so weak at that point? Or did physical therapy kind of help keep them strong? Um, they, they weakened, but they would tense up. And I would need to keep doing stretches uh, or else I'll feel a, a slight pain, slight pain on, uh, if I did not do my stretches. So I had to keep up with my stretches to eliminate that pain. And what I figured out would help me in my fitness journey was hip thrusts help a lot. It well, Me personally, they help me a lot. If I'm feeling pain, I do some hip thrusts. And it is it's gone, completely gone. We're a lot better. Yeah. But, and that's just laying on your back with your knees bent, right? And then lifting up. Yeah. Is that a hip? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how was it? How were you emotionally after having back surgery? I had back surgery just for a herniated disc. I didn't have any spinal fusion. So I, I had just a micro disectomy. I was scared. To, I was scared to move for an entire year after surgery because I didn't want to re herniate. Did you have any of that kind of fear living in your brain after surgery? Oh, definitely. Um, I thought, uh, after surgery, after I recovered, I thought I was fine. I was like, Oh man, we're getting back to this. I, cause I used to ride dirt bikes, do play football, baseball, skateboard, everything. But once I got back on a dirt bike, that's when the fear kicked in. That that's when I was like, like, I started going faster, faster, and then the fear had kicked in. I was like, well, well, what if I take a spill? Like, what if, uh, like you know, there there's implants. Like, what what if like I fall? You know, it's metal. It's gonna bend. What if I, and I come out? I'm like, what if, what if this time, I I heard it. What what if I heard it again? And this time I don't get to keep my legs. What what happens? You know, I was like then. That started playing, motorcycles, everything stopped. Like I was, yeah, I was just afraid to do so many things after that. And it, and it was for, for years. Yeah. So how did you get over that? Uh, to get over that, I got over it once living here in California when my father came to visit me. And he dropped off a Harley. When he dropped off that Harley, I got on it, rode it. And I was like, oh, man. I'm like, nah. That that fear eliminated. And then I instantly thought, I'm like, okay. I'm like, I do not want to look like a weenie hopping off of this bike. I was like, no. We're, <laughs> yeah, we're changing. Cool. Yeah. I was like, we're completely changing. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate motivation. They should just start handing out. Harley's after spinal fusion surgeries then. Hey, I, hey, that, that would be nice, wouldn't it? 
Yeah, as soon as I heard the engine starting that, I'm like, oh, man, here we go. Rode it. Yeah. Hit the speeds. Beer mm-hmm. was gone. I was like, oh. I'm so if somebody, if somebody watches your interview today and they're about to get spinal fusion and they're upset because life will never be the same, what would you say to them? I would say stay positive. Keep it positive. Your inner, your inner dialogue has to be positive. You will get through it. I'm like, it's not going to be easy. Um, from personal experience, that that fear is going to hold you back from many things. It's like you please eliminate that fear as soon as possible. Once it, it kicks in, you have to do something to get rid of it. It's like it will hold you back. It will waste a lot of your time. You will be stuck behind that fear for a long time. And you you are now doing fitness training. Is that correct? Yeah, I am. Um my uncle has started me in fitness and it has and been on and off because of the spine surgery when I would do, you know, I love fitness, but every time I would do squats, the following morning, it would hurt to even move my legs. So I would always stop until that hardly came into picture. I'm like, no, we're pushing through all of this and we're getting there. So now. Yeah, I uh, I help people get the physique because when you get that physique, your confidence increases. You wake up in the morning, you know, you look in that mirror, you're like, you're like, God, you look good, you look good. Like, hey, let's start that day off. You know, it, um, that workout that, uh, comes in hand with the mindset because w- when you look good, you're gonna feel good. You're just gonna be positive all day long. Like that's what you want. You want to be. You want to approach every day positive, all the time. And have you worked with other people who have had uh, back surgery in your fitness? No, but uh, I I've spoken to a few people on Instagram. They had messaged me and they were asking me questions like, "Oh, how did I get through the fear? A Harley? Get yourself a Harley?" No, I'm just kidding. I was like, hey, it's gonna, it's gonna take some, it's gonna take some time, but you have to you have to look for something that that's gonna help you get through it, that inspires you, that motivates you, mm-hmm. um, that makes you want to just get better. So, what is uh, do you have a website for your your fitness coaching or and mindset coaching, or are you on Instagram? Right now, I'm on I'm on Instagram. My YouTube's coming out soon. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, we'll we'll get there. My Instagram would be vet double t underscore fit. Okay. Yeah, that's where people would message me, and we'll you know, we'll see where you're at with your fitness journey. I'm trying to think what I need. I don't think a Harley would be my motivation. So I'm right? trying to think. <laughs> <laughs> what is mine? <laughs> Unfortunately, right now, Dairy Queen is my motivation to get out of the house. <laughs> hey, that's. You can't go wrong with ice cream. Ice cream helps. <laughs> oh, goodness. So do you still get some back pain today? Are you finding you have to work through the pain for the gain? Or, or is your back completely pain-free? For the, uh, for the back pain, it, it's um, if I spend, so like a, a fitness-wise, it would be my uh, squat, anything in, uh, engaging the lower back. The following day, I'll feel it. If I spend too much time, like reaching down, like if I'm working on on the car, if I'm on the bike, or something too much time spent standing back up. That's the problem. I have to move slow, or else uh, a little sharp pain kicks in, and I like just bend right back down, I'm like. And I have to slowly move up to help with that. But another one is if I'm just standing still in the same spot for a long period of time without moving, it is gonna start, it's gonna start hurting. And it's gonna hurt the rest of the day until I lay down and you know, wake up in the morning, I'll feel better. But if if I just stand there, like like a a, a group meeting, if I'm just standing there. 
yeah, it, it, I, I'm like, I'm like, oh, here we go. He, he, there's gonna be some pain, and it's gonna be the the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But despite that, you can still look cool riding on a Harley. Hey, right? I, yeah. I still do. <laughs> <laughs> mindset, mindset is everything, right? Yeah, that that is true. Your your inner dialogue, how you speak to yourself, is is everything. That's that's gonna be a big one. Like, guys, keep it positive in the hospital. That's how I figured out my inner dialogue because I could have given up. Like, as soon as I uh, felt nauseous and dizzy, passing out, I could have been like, no, I'm going to lay down, give up. I'm like, but no, I was encouraging myself, keeping it positive. Uh, I guess that's the good thing that came out of it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Discovered my positive inner dialogue. Yeah. Definitely. At 17 years old, that's a great lesson. I mean, it stinks that you had to have back surgery at 17, but to learn such a great lesson at 17 to carry you on through to now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, after that surgery, I, I also I also spent ye- like a long time hating that moment, thinking, why? Why did it ever have to happen? I wish it didn't. You know, at the time we we don't know why that happens. Later on, we you know we we you know we, we get our definition of why it happens, our, our understanding. But that is unique to my path. You know, it's like hey, to discover your your positive inner dialogue. Sorry, but this is what had to happen to you. It's like that was just part of my path. Yeah. Yeah, I often try to encourage people like I know this moment is hard uh, because I'm in a herniated disc group on Reddit. Um, So I know this moment is hard, but you have to know that once you're out of it, you're going to find the good that comes from it. You have to believe that. Yeah. Also, what when you're going through the recovery, you you have to look for something that's going to help, help help you. Cause it, it it'll get dark at times. It will, but you have to you have to find something that's gonna just get you out of that. Uh, for me, it was a and it, it I, I spent long nights just laying there, like in a dark place, until two a.m. when an anime the anime Inuyasha would come on and what would help me was the end credit song of. Uh, Fukai Mori, like that would help. That would get me back to a positive state. And I'm like, okay, we're, we're, let's go to sleep. But that, for some reason, that that helped me a lot. And I was like, but yeah, when you're going through through the recovery process and it gets dark, just find something that's gonna help you through those moments. Yeah, yeah. Mine was Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, Star Trek, Star Wars. <laughs> Oh, Anthony, I appreciate you so much coming on and sharing your uh, your spinal fusion journey at such a young age. Tell me again, what is your Instagram handle? Uh, vet, two T's underscore fit. Great. I'm going to put that on the screen and I'll include it in the uh, the podcast description. If you are a listener and you have a positive story of recovery from a serious back or neck injury, and you would like to include your voice on the show, head over to bedbackbeyond.com and click share your story. Once again, Anthony, thank you so much. You're a great encouragement to those who are facing one of the most fearful surgeries probably in their history. Hey, thank you. Appreciate being on here. Um, Yeah, it's scary, but... You guys will get through it. Just keep it positive.